This is a new series that we are starting called Clue Cooks Dinner Again because I wanna show you how I actually make my own dinners. Some days I don't wanna make dinner. I have been writing about food or cooking something else all day long, but the point or the reality really is that we have to eat. I don't know how you people with kids do it every day. I literally have to cook for one other person and I want to pull my hair out. But I do get dinner on the table and I wanted to show you how I do it. It's casual, it's fun, it's cool. Today's dinner is a delightful vegetable soup. I chopped up some parsnips, some carrots, some potatoes, some celery, some leek, a leek an onion, some garlic. I sauteed it with some really delicious butter and olive oil, cooked it down, added in some stock, some thyme. What else did I do? Simmered it away, and then I added in some thinly sliced cabbage right towards the end to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of crunch. And I'm gonna garnish it with some celery leaves and some dill, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and serve it with toast. I feel like it's a win. Happy. Happy, not hungry. This is... A disaster, but I have carrot, celery, a lone leek, a fair, fairly big carrot, a fairly big parsnip, cabbage, and I did not make chicken stock, even though I normally do, but I haven't had a chance, so I'm gonna use better than bouillon. Oops, <laughs> lots of condiments going on. <laughs> oh, potatoes. I grabbed some cabbage, some celery, two large root vegetables, a carrot and a parsnip, a leek that is definitely in need of using, and then I grabbed some potatoes because I thought, let's bulk up this soup a little bit, and some garlic. I'm gonna start by peeling my parsnip and my carrot. I am still doing dry January. Those are not real wine. It's been surprisingly easy this month. I also have uh, some fake candles. I've been watching a lot of the uh, Duval kitchen series, trying to bring a little of Duval into my home here. From far away, they give off the appearance of real candlelight. I don't recommend doing a close up, but it's really just about the ambiance. Lot of love a leak. Got lava, gotta love a leak. This is very dirty. There's gonna be a lot of, see, look, it's just like, that's not good for soups. I'm gonna have to give this a rinse, but I'm gonna cut it first. Just giving my carrot a square, squaring it off really is what I'm doing. So I can cut it. Into even planks and then I can dice it. Making a chunky dice, chunky vegetable soup. I'm going to do the same thing with this parsnip. You want everything around the same size so it cooks in roughly the same amount of time. You'll notice that I have a temporary island here. It is really not an island at all. It is a rolling tool chest and it works great. Maybe we'll do a video on that. And some celery. And I'm gonna do two, because they're not terribly big. Maybe I'll save some celery leaves for garnish. You'll notice that everything is roughly the same size. Oh, see, look at that. No, thank you. We may want also a small onion. It's not a ton of leek here. It was not a substantial leek. This knife is shit. Not much better. Home cooks, they're just like us. <sighs> Except you probably have sharper knives. We can start sweating, sweating the oldies. <laughs> just 
kidding. <laughs> you could use only olive oil, but my friend Michelle brought me some special butter from Canada. Because the soup is so simple that using a little bit of butter will add a really nice bit of richness. So probably a tablespoon and a half. I'm gonna add in all of the vegetables. I'll cut up the garlic momentarily. So, as a reminder, I added a little bit of that special butter along with the olive oil because the ingredients are so simple that adding the butter adds a little bit of richness to the soup. I'm gonna let it sweat out, cook down just a little bit, added a fair amount of salt because there's potatoes in there and they can handle it and they need it for seasoning and flavor. And now what I'm gonna do is just let this cook over medium heat for about eight minutes till things start to sweat out, cook down a little bit, add some garlic, we'll add some stock, in this case better than bouillon, and just let it simmer together for a little while. I have time. <laughs> we got time, literally and figuratively. These guys are gonna sweat it out for like, you know, 10 minutes while adding cabbage towards the end. So it adds a little bit of texture and is not as soft as the rest of the soup. Also gonna add in a pinch of these um, dried chilies. It's not spicy, it's earthy, and it's got a bit of sweetness to it. And it'll be nice counterbalance to the pepper flakes that I put in. I'm gonna add in our garlic. I waited because it's finely chopped and everything else is cooking at a different pace. I'm keeping this dish vegetarian, but if you wanted, you could brown some sausage or some pancetta before you put in your vegetables, take them out, and when you're ready to serve the soup, you could throw them back in right before serving. I'm trying to keep things a little bit clean. So I'm not gonna do that, but it sounds very good. I'm gonna add in six cups of water. I think six cups is a good amount for a soup. If you're looking for a more stewy texture or texture, I guess, stewy texture, stewy, I don't know. Six cups of water is a brothy soup. Four to five is less brothy, I'm going with six, I have potatoes in here so that I know that's gonna bulk up when they release its starch as well. So it'll make the broth a little bit creamier. I'm gonna bring this to a simmer and then add in some better than bouillon. This is already looking delightful. Hudson is a bit of a bread desert. We had a phenomenal bakery here called Bread Folk who just decided to close. Fuck you, Bread Folk. My freezer is full of bread that I pre-ordered from another wonderful bakery, but who have also closed. Luckily, my friend Michelle, who brought the butter, also brought us amazing bread from Toronto from a bakery called Robinson's. Robinson. Uh, and I thought that a piece of toast with some of that butter would be a perfect accoutrement to our soup, and that's it. I don't need a side, I don't need a salad, I have delicious toast, I'm gonna dip it into the soup, and I am going to be a happy camper. Since we've got a substantial soup going, a really nice piece of toast. Is this all we have left of this bread? Would be the way to go. Is this all we have left? Why? We just, we just cut it. You had it for lunch, didn't you? It's not fair. There's nothing left. Fuck you, Chad. I'm adding the cabbage at a later date. <laughs> or at a later time, because I want a little bit of texture. I don't want it to be the same as the softened vegetables and I want to keep it a bit crunchy. I love Savoy cabbage. It is one of my favorite, favorite vegetables. And I'm just gonna add it in probably, I don't know, three minutes or so before I want to serve. It'll soften while it's in there, but it won't get completely soft. I'm just, cutting it into thin 
strips. While our soup simmers, I'm going to cut up some celery leaves and a bit of dill to add to the top of our soups. I just tasted this and the potatoes and the parsnips are soft. This has been simmering probably for about 15 minutes. I'm adding in our cabbage. Let this wilt down a little bit. If you like this video, please subscribe to my newsletter, Kalu Cooks on Substack, where this will live. You can also like and subscribe to my YouTube channel where all the videos will live. And I hope to see you again soon.